Well, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to you lovely folks joining me here nice and early over at Marvel Snap Zone. Something a little bit different coming up for you today. Um, I kind of just wanted to show off some nice variants. I know that sounds like a stupid reason for a video, but that's kind of where I am. Uh, when we talk on the stream, uh, like all the time, I get quite a lot of questions about, hey, you know, what variants do you have? What are your favorites? What variants do you wish you had? And obviously, I can't show you some of the variants I wish I had. That's kind of not how that works. But I can show you some that I've acquired in my time playing since beta that are my favorites. Give you an idea of what they look like. Maybe uh, inspire you to chase a couple of them down yourself when they appear in your shop. Um, and I just thought it'd be a nice thing to showcase going into the holiday season while we're looking to, uh, to fill out the calendar. Um, so yeah, why not? Um, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, do let me know because it'd be kind of cool to do content like this again in the future if it goes down particularly well. Um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. It'll be very, very cool to see you again for more Marvel Snap content in the future either way. Uh, and last but not least, feel free to come and join the community Discord server or leave a comment down below if you've got variants you want to talk about or variants you want to share. Because uh, it'd be very cool to see what your favourites are that I don't have and vice versa that I might not be aware exist. So let's hop on over into uh, our lovely little deck list screen. And I'll start off with uh, the variant I actually got for free very recently from uh, the drop from winning Game of the Year. Uh, I got this lovely little wasp from Dan Hip, which uh, I, I love Dan Hip's art style. I know a few people have kind of talked about this in the past. Uh, very recent one for me, so still in the process of getting it upgraded and split for the first time. But I think Dan Hip's stuff is just exceptionally cartoony, but has quite a lot of character. It doesn't feel like the pixel arts that feel a bit jaded or a bit... Uh, poor quality sometimes this feels alive and like i think these this artwork on some dan hip stuff is just incredible no doubt we'll see one or two more down on the way through the collection uh but i'm a really big fan of this one i'm looking forward to getting it split uh, i think it pops out of the card very very well and uh i think the art style is just pretty incredible so there you go uh up next uh luca claretti is not an artist i'm familiar with but i think this version of the hood is so, looks so good um that i kept the purple border on it deliberately um, I've actually split the hood a number of times and could have a very, very nice version of this if I if I wanted to. Um, but I think the purple border and the purple background on this looks incredible. Um, the, the face is fantastic. Uh, the suit looks very well done and it pops out the card very, very well. It's like very subtle, much like less like the Wasp uh, and more like it's uh, a crisp decision. But like the purple border and the purple background on this thing are just incredible. So really big fan. Uh, I'm going to take a second to look at Bast here because... This one is one that a lot of people haven't actually seen so far, because upgrading Bast is not the easiest thing to do, let alone acquiring Bast. So this is not a car people get a particularly good close look at very often. Um, but I think the infinite border on this and the rainbow background look incredible. She, she's great. The hands look like they're grabbing onto the border of the car, which is incredible. And uh, yeah, she moves very, very well. And, uh, very cool to have an upgraded version of this all ready to go. Uh, already, it's been a card I've put a lot of uh, a lot of credits into as they've come up. Uh, you'll see that we do actually have the version with uh, with comets going around it as well at this moment in time, but we haven't started upgrading that one yet, as we have been playing with the infinite one because I think it looks so good all around, uh, which is kind of great. Uh, want to move swiftly on uh, down to the venomized Nova. We'll take a look at the foil version of this and the non-foil version of this because um, I actually think I prefer the version with the, the planets in the background pretty visible. But I know a lot of people's favorite like variants are the Venomized ones anyway. And I think this Nova looks just incredible. Like, the the animation is very, very smooth. The background looks so nice with the infinite background in the galaxy style. It just really pops, which I think is, is very, very nice. And it still looks really good in, um, in Split, too. Even when the planets are a little more subtle and the rainbow background definitely isn't quite as, uh, quite as nice with the border, per se. But the sparkles on this look very nice. And the rainbow background does still give it a, a different kind of energy because you can still see the planets in the background even though they're rainbowified. So I definitely think I prefer the, the non, non rainbow foil version just because the background is so nice on this. But uh, I think the Venomized variants are just very, very nice and highly recommend picking some up if you can. Speaking of Dan Hip variants, uh, this is another one that I love is the Yondu. I think the dark coming out of this is incredible and I can't wait to upgrade this one a little bit more. Uh, it is pretty recent to my collection as well. And again, just kind of what we said about the Wasp here. Lovely card that is that kind of comic -y art style. Doesn't feel cheap like some of the pixel variants do. Uh, the cape being animated in the background is a nice touch as well. Uh, yeah, I just love Dan Hip's style. So you'll see you'll see a few of those as we go that I am a big fan of, no doubt. Uh, one that I get a lot of compliments on on the stream is actually this Ebony Moor. I, I don't know the origin of this card, unfortunately. Uh, and I probably should upgrade it a little bit more. Um, but people really like this one. People really like the, the gun-to-head Ebony Moor. 
Uh, I personally would really like to pick up the Winterized variant for the event that's on right now and, and play with that one because I think it's really nice. This one gets a lot of compliments when we play it on stream, so also worth highlighting this one. Uh, I guess my favourite uh, split I have so far will be the one that I kind of cover here in Angela. If you've watched any of our Infinity Split videos or stuff like that, you'll know this is the card I had the most splits of. Uh, and because I played a lot of Angela early, uh, it made a lot of sense. There's even like 550 odd boosters left over, doing a whole lot of nothing. This card is just gorgeous. It's the only Inkify that I currently have, uh, and I, I want more pretty desperately, but you, we all know how hard they are to get. Um, Sparkle Effect is great on this thing. Like... I think the Inkify works so well on these Chibis too for the way they pop out. Uh, it's just one of my favourite looking cards that I own, uh, regardless of variant. And uh, I'm a really big fan of this, especially with the Infinity Border on this version. It tends to be the one that we play with all the time, even though we do own what is apparently the slightly rarer version with the gold background. Um, this is also the only gold that I have. Uh, I still only have golds on Angela and on uh, and Inkify's on Angela. Um, so some people prefer this one with the, the crisp gold background, and I actually think this looks pretty good. It works very well with her armor, um, with the, the background matching up color-wise, but there's just something about the Inca 5 variants that I think are just uh, stunning with the way the light reflects off of them. So I'm a really, 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 really big fan of this. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, other ones that I know off the top of my head are just personal favorites of mine. We'll keep on scrolling till we go down. I'm, 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 a, I'm a bit of a steampunk guy. Uh, I don't play Viper very much, which is why this card is sadly not all that upgraded, but I like Steampunk. Uh, I'm a big fan of kind of the whole concept of it. I think everything looks exceptional. And this version of Viper, as a result, definitely kind of stands out to me. It's a card that I'm looking forward to hopefully getting older of the century to try and play with more, because I would like to play more Viper decks in the future, because this variant is real swish, and I would like to have more of a reason to upgrade it. Because uh, that gun, look how far that comes out of the card. Like, we'll tilt it off to the left there. It's going to look great when it's like fully animated up, I think. Um, yeah, big fan of steampunk stuff, so it makes sense that I'm a big fan of that Viper. Uh, I'll give a quick shout-out to one that you can definitely all get yourself at the moment. I, I didn't think I liked this card that much, but the Kim Jacinto version of uh, of Silver Surfer, when it's all infinited up and like popping out of the card, has all the rocks and rubble in the background. Uh, this thing really grew on me, and I'm so glad that it was available in the Season Pass and it's still kind of available for people to go and get now. Uh, very happy to have fully upgraded this one. I think it looks phenomenal. Uh, and obviously that's great for a card that is fundamentally very powerful uh, and sees a lot of play. So nice to have a very, very nice, clean version of this. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the the, the split version of it. I've got the, the red uh, glimmer on this at the moment. Haven't started upgrading it since we split the infinite version. I think I really like... It's like kind of like the Nova for me. I really like the background on uh, on this card overall because I think the, the background really serves Silver Surfer well. Like all these greens and purples and stuff. Work very, very well with the infinite border. So I'm not sure I prefer the rainbow one just yet, but I might I might change my mind. We move on to my actual favorite variant. A lot of people that tune into the stream on a very regular basis know that this one is actually just my favorite uh, out of everything that I own. Uh, the Rian Gazales variant of Rogue. I just love watercolor. I think watercolor looks so stunning. So I recently split this. It's actually a card that I didn't split for ages because I loved the... Uh, the orange border on the unsplit version, um, but the green works quite well on the split version because there's so much green in her card art that it still works quite well. Uh, but if we take a look at the unsplit version, like I, I love the background colors of this and how just just how stunning it is color wise. Unfortunately, it looks like me splitting it might have broken the back a little bit because now some white that wasn't there before. Um, but uh, I'm a big fan. I just like the watercolor background and and the way that Rogue looks here. I, I just yeah, I think the art's incredible. Uh, I, I have nothing rather than like, I think it's just nuts and it looks great. Um, Electro here, I, I, we got a lot of compliments on this one on the stream as well. Traditional Electro with his underpants on the outside is a fan favorite for sure. These lightning bolts kind of like popping out of the card um, is, is also very, very, very cool. Uh, very recent edition again, we opened this in a cache not so long ago. Uh, looking forward to continuing to upgrade it, but, uh, but underpants Electro definitely deserves a shout out on the way past. Uh, as does uh, Good Boy. Uh, everyone loves the Scooby-Doo version of Cosmo. Again, Luca Claretti here doing a fantastic job. This is one that we get talked about on stream all the time. And again, I tend to use the infinite border on this because it works so well with the purples in the background, which makes me not want to play the rainbow fied version that I'll show you in a minute. But uh, Good Boy, Good Doggo. And uh, everyone kind of loves this version of him. And uh, I, I'm inclined to agree. I do think the, the rainbow one is much worse in this case, unfortunately. It's not even close for me. Uh, that's why I kind of stopped upgrading it on the way. Because again, I just think this, this like space... Any any infinite border works so well on cards that have space in the background. So really big fan of using this version of Cosmo here with with the background intact. 
Moving swiftly on to other stuff. Uh, this is one of the more unique variants I own. I, I like pointing it out whenever we get the chance to play Kingpin. Um, 1602 stuff is not something I've seen tons of in terms of being played by people. They don't seem all that common. And it's just such a different feel. Like the idea of having Kingpin here as a pirate is uh, <laughs> it's just kind of cool. Uh, it's very, very different. I'm not a comic book guy, so obviously the lore behind this is not something that I really know too much about. Uh, but I love the idea of taking them to a different place, different universe thematically. Uh, and that's very much what this Kingpin makes me uh, feel like or reminds me of. Uh, the non-split version is quite nice as well because you can see the treasure chest and the pirate ship and stuff in the background. Uh, which I think adds some character to it as well. Even though I think the infinite border actually looks kind of bad on this because there's so many oranges and stuff in the background that uh, I don't prefer it. But uh, the treasure chest is very, very much a sweet nod. And uh, I think the blue border on the, the rainbow version is definitely the kind of the way to go in this case too. Uh, really fun variant. I know some people prefer this one, the summer vacation one, where he looks like he's uh, having a cocktail, but for me, it's it's Pirate Kingpin, for sure. Uh, this one is really controversial, and I love Dan Hip stuff, and I, I know I keep uh, saying that as we go through, but a lot of people don't like this variant, and they always wonder why it's the one I'm playing when I play Lady Sif, but I think this card looks great. And again, I love Dan Hip's art style, so that's definitely part of it. Um, but this is so cute, like, cartini-wise, it pops out great. The sword and shield look fantastic. Again, green, spacey-style backgrounds work so well with the Infinity Border. Uh, I love this card. I think it's going to be my Lady Sif variant until I find another one that uh, that beats it, uh, which makes a lot of sense when you say it like that. Um, but yeah, I, I just have a soft spot for Dan Hip, and hopefully uh, some of you do too, because it's a, a real, real sweet card. Uh, one, again, that kind of gets a lot of talk, actually, is the Mr. Negative variant here. I actually don't know where this originates from, but the one with the sword. Uh, this is a fan favorite. A lot of people have this one. Um, I actually think the infinity split on this kind of ruins it because you want the, the black border to go alongside with the, the no colors on this. Uh, and the split is like kind of better because it's it's not quite as black and white and he stands out more. But I, I think this is the kind of card that like the gold background would look incredible on this. So I'm hoping to, to get to that point with this one eventually. Uh, but yeah, a fan favourite uh, variant here, so definitely worth kind of stopping on the way past to make mention to. Another fan favourite actually is the, the Dracula Dracula, like the, the Bram Stoker style Dracula. Uh, picked this one up in a cache a long time ago. We've played it quite a lot in the discard decks on stream. Uh, very traditional style Dracula, more than comic book style. And uh, I know this one's a bit of a fan favourite too. Uh, so definitely worth keeping your eyes open for that if you're you're into your, your Dracula style lore for sure. Uh, moving swiftly on, uh, Spider-Man here, actually. I think, um, we only recently picked this one up as well. It's another one that we opened in a cache a little while ago. And this gets compliments all the time. We've only played Spider-Man on stream in the Valkyrie control deck recently. Um, but people loved this one. People loved the style of this with the, the webbed up villains and buildings in the background. Um, popping out of the card, coming directly at you. Uh, more like the Miles Morales kind of vibes. Uh, I think this thing looks great too. I'm looking forward to getting some more juice on this. I think the blue border works quite well with this hoodie. Um, but I do think this one will be one that we upgrade because I think it will look pretty damn stunning when we do. Uh, it's a big fan of this one too. Uh, definitely my favourite version of Spider-Man that I have seen so far. Uh, shout out to Luchador versions of cards. I only have the Warpath, but I do think the, the Venom is also incredible. Uh, again, very much like the Kingpin. These things feel super thematic, taking them out into a different universe and giving them different uh, different goals and like uh, career pathways and stuff. Uh, I think this makes this card very, very cool. Uh, I play a bit of Warpath in Destroyer every now and then and having this like uh, wrestling-themed one uh, definitely floats my boat. So really big fan of, of that one on the way past. Seems like the right time of year to point out this version of Devil Dino. I've, I've had the Christmas Winter Vacation one for a very long time. It's like... My favourite version of Dino, even though I know it's not the rarest. I think the Infinity Border does work pretty reasonably well on the snowy trees in the background. But the idea of this gigantic-ass dinosaur just being in a, a scarf and, hood, and, and hat is like the funniest stuff to me. I love it. Um, so really big fan of this one. Was really happy to crack it uh, from a cache a long, long time ago. And I do actually think this one looks pretty good with, uh, with the splits as well. So like the, the background works quite well. You still have the tree, for example, uh, in this rainbow split version that we had first time round. And the snow at the front. Like the snow being on another layer above the dino is so good because it sparkles really nicely when you move the card around. Which I think is a, a fantastic little touch. And then we've got a version now with Comet uh, around the background, which I'm not as big a fan of. But I think the big thing for me is the fact the tree here is still visible in the rainbow background. is a really nice little touch for me. Uh, I think the tree goes a very, very long way to adding some character to this. Uh, but I love this variant. It's my favorite, favorite dino by quite a lot, in my opinion. 
Uh, moving swiftly on, one that I literally picked up earlier today. I know there are many, many versions of Aero that people are a fan favorite of. The Art Germ variant finally popped up in my store, and I, I, I was debating buying the Sunspot bundle, but this is now my Christmas present to myself. It's much cheaper. And, uh, and easier to stomach in, in paying that kind of price. Uh, I've wanted a nice looking arrow for a while and to finally have it pop up in the store. Uh, I literally just dumped my spare uh, credits into it this morning to get it looking nice before I shot this video. Um, all the arrow variants just look great. All, like, bait all of them. I don't think there's a single bad one. Uh, the anime Toronto ones are very, very sweet. Uh, brand new subs coming in while we do this is always nice. Um, yeah, I, I, I love these. I think all the arrow variants are very, very slick. And I'm happy to finally have one that looks... Uh, just stunning. So, there we go. Very, very nice. Uh, shout out to this Arnim Zola. I know this is one that's a real fan favorite, the Ultimate variant. And it got a bit of a reputation because for ages it was broken. And uh, if you upgraded it, it just like broke and sprayed everywhere. It was like, it, 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 the art got all broken up and depixelated. Um, which was quite funny, but apparently is now fixed. Uh, I only picked this up recently, and I've actually, I don't think I've played a single game with Arnim Zola since I picked it up, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but this is creepy as crap. And I, again, as someone who knows nothing about comic book lore, this is so startlingly different than the normal Zola that I think it deserves a shout out. Uh, and it's, it's graphic, it's gnarly. Uh, this thing feels terrifying, and that's uh, that's very, very cool. So, looking forward to hopefully getting some, uh, some more negative shells with Zola in the future, or maybe just some, like, Wong Black Panther shenanigans to, to actually use this card, because uh, this is a sweet, very different variant to, to the alternatives, uh, which we, we always like pointing out where possible. Uh, another one that's a fan favourite, people kind of love this one, the, the Slepnir variant of Odin, with him on horseback. Um, for ages, we actually used the we, we so the first variant I ever opened actually uh, when I first started playing Marvel Snap was this Flaviano variant of Odin, and I used this for ages. And I think this is a really nice card. Um, nothing's changed with this. It was like a very sweet variant to open very early. Um, but we then moved on to this one because I think the art is just badass on the the horse riding Odin. It is by far my favourite in terms of the Odin variants that I've seen on the internet and in my collection so far. And I actually think it looks pretty good with the, the rainbow background too. So we got some got some sparkles on this one from, from a, a glimmer effect. Uh, I want to upgrade this a little more to see what it really looks like. But I do think the rainbow background works quite well with the horse uh, on this card. So big recommend the Slepnir variant of Odin. Uh, my possibly my second favourite variant is this Magneto. This is actually the one of only two variants, uh, three variants now I ever bought. So I bought the Aero we showed and the Rogue we showed earlier on. This is the third one that I bought with gold uh, because it's just it, again it's just incredible. Look at the cape movement on this card, like the the oh, oh, oh. it just it, I, so how do I even use words? The silver works so well on this. The cape's movement is incredible. Uh, the power like crackling from his hands feels like it's coming towards you uh, when it's fully animated out into infinite. Uh, I know this is a fan favorite as well. A lot of people love this one, uh, but it is definitely, definitely a favorite of mine. Uh, we actually have a version now with the black um, glimmer effect, and I'm looking forward to slowly upgrading this one as well because uh, the black, the black feels quite toxic coming off of this. Gives it a bit of a different feel. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what this looks like when it's fully upgraded, so definitely on the list as well. Uh, last but not least, I'm going to give a small shout out to the Spirit of Thor version of Destroyer because uh, the hammer is ace on this, and I do want to upgrade it more just because the hammer looks so good. Uh, I don't use the other Destroyer ever. I always use this when I'm playing Destroyer um, because it's just way more flavorful. The idea of uh, the Destroyer becoming Thor is very funny to me as a non-comic book guy. As I say, the lightning on this hammer is just uh, A+, plus in terms of like animation coming out of the card. And I, it's another one that I intend on upgrading more going forward to make that look even cooler. So yeah, this was something a little bit different. And I'm sure there will be variants I scrolled past on my travels that you guys would like to take a closer look at that maybe you're more of a big fan of than I am. So maybe if this was enjoyable for you, we can do it again in the future. But uh, you'll have to let me know if this is the kind of content you would actually bother to enjoy. Uh, and also just let me know what variants you've got that I should be trying to acquire myself uh, in the comment section down below or over on Discord or come and tag me on Twitter at Howling Minds if you prefer. But I have been Howling Minds and until next time, you've been amazing. And this has been Marvel Snap Zone. Take care. Have a good one.